Hello, I'm John Berry. I'm going to explain the basic PCB design constraints that you need to route a memory controller to SD RAM devices in an example DDR3 configuration. It's sometimes hard to work out exactly what PCB design constraints you need. Sometimes this constraint information is mentioned in a few lines of text within hundreds of pages of complex information. I'll describe, as simply as I can, what constraints you need and why you need them. This is a DDR3 memory circuit. A controller, implemented in an FPGA, is interfaced to five 1 gigabit SDRAM memory devices. The leveling feature of DDR3 has been enabled. This means the memory devices can be routed to in sequence in an arrangement called a flyby topology instead of needing HTree routing like earlier generations of double data rate memory such as DDR2. The single ended address and command signals and the differential clock are terminated at the far end. So first, how should we route the differential clock and the single ended address and command signals from the controller to the first SD RAM? The positive and negative sides of the clock differential pair must be routed completely symmetrically and matched to within plus or minus 0.127 millimeters. The total route length from the controller to the first SD RAM must be no more than 178 millimeters. The route lengths of the single ended address and command signals and the differential clock must be matched within 3.175 millimeters. At each subsequent SD RAM, the route lengths of the differential clock and the single ended address and command signals must be matched to the same tolerances. The SD RAMs should be as evenly spaced as possible so that the root lengths between each SD RAM and the next are as near identical as can be achieved. Within each 8 bit byte lane, the bidirectional single ended data and its associated bidirectional differential strobe are matched to within plus or minus 1.27 millimeters. The clock routing from controller to SD RAM must also be between 10 mm and 100 mm longer than initiated byte lane routing. Now let's consider the route topologies we'll need to get the signals from the controller to the SD RAMs in good shape. In circuits like this, where DDR3 leveling is enabled, there are very few topologies to consider. The address and command signals, and the control signals not shown in this diagram, all require the same topology. Each SD RAM is connected to the main routing path by a short stub. Ideally, these stubs should be geometrically identical to one another. The blue circles are virtual branch points. Each of these virtual branch points or VBPs, represents a junction in the physical routing where there is no component pin, but where we need a persistent reference point within the physical design. At each SD RAM, VBPs will correspond to breakout via positions. But what about the two VBPs on the left, either side of the wide yellow transmission line? At these two positions, there won't necessarily be a layer change, but there will be a change of track width. On an impedance controlled board like this, a wider track means a lower characteristic impedance. Each of the evenly spaced SD RAMs adds an extra capacitive load to the routing adjacent to it. In this specific electrical case, this regular capacitive loading adds to the effective capacitance per unit length in the routing between the SD RAMs. This greater effective capacitance per unit length results in a lower effective characteristic impedance in the routing in that area. This lower loaded impedance applies only to the routing between the SD RAMs and a short distance either side. So the routing shortly after the controller, indicated by the yellow transmission line, is widened and its impedance lowered in order to balance the lower loaded impedance in the area of routing within the SD RAMs and thus to reduce the impedance discontinuity in the routing and improve signal integrity. The topology of the differential clock 
is very similar to the topology of the single-ended address and command signals, but there's a termination network at the far end instead of a single resistor, and at the near end a bridging capacitor is inserted to improve signal quality. Impedance balance routing is needed here too, but differential impedance depends on both track width and differential track-to-track -track spacing. Within each byte lane, the single-ended bidirectional data signals and their bidirectional differential strobes are routed directly from the controller to single SD RAMs. The impedance isn't affected by regularly spaced loads, so simple point-to-point -to -point topologies are all that's required. The topology required for control signals is the same as for address and command signals, so these few topologies are all that's required for the entire DDR3 circuit.